Howdy, I'm Clint Walker and you're watching GVTV News. Thanks Clint and I'm Randy Hansen and World News Headlines today. Bradley Manning pre-trial hearing concludes. And Boehner relents on tax cut deal pushes Keystone. And 40 killed in Damascus suicide attack. An Egyptian rally in terror against military rule. Pakistan rejects U.S. probe of deadly NATO bombings. And U.S. and Russia spar over probe of Libyan civilian deaths. A massive shell oil spill approaches Nigerian coast. And federal judge blocks key provisions in South Carolina's anti-immigration law. And thousands take part in California nurses' strike. And police clear occupied camps in Albany, Berkeley, and, and Berkeley. U.S. asks science journals to withhold study findings. But before these stories, GVTV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. In today's first world news story, pre-trial military hearing for alleged Army whistleblower Bradley Manning has concluded after six days Manning faces life in prison and possible death for allegedly leaking classified video and diplomatic cables to WikiLeaks. In closing arguments, the defense said the government had failed to properly address Manning's emotional state. While the prosecution argued the WikiLeaks disclosures had helped Al-Qaeda, presiding officer will now have at least three weeks to decide whether Manning is to stand trial. And House Republicans have backed down on their opposition to a bipartisan Senate measure to extend the payroll tax cut set to expire at the year's end. On Thursday, House Speaker John Boehner relented following growing criticism from within his own party. Announcing a deal with Senate Democrats, Boehner said a full-year payroll tax cut will be negotiated through conference committee. He said the Senate will join the House in immediately appointing ref conferences with instructions to reach an agreement in the weeks ahead on a full one-year payroll tax reduction along with unemployment reforms and extension of unemployment benefits and so-called doc fix for two years. We expect that there will be these members will work expediently to complete the one-year extension all of us want. Boehner had previously insisted including a number of unrelated proposals, including the Keystone XL oil pipeline from Canada. In his remarks, Boehner said he retained the hope that the Keystone will be approved as part of the long-term spending deal. He said one important provision in this measure is that I want to highlight is the Keystone Pipeline. As you know, this project would create tens of thousands of jobs in our country. This job project has bipartisan support in the House and the Senate. It's backed by a broad-based coalition, and I hope the President will approve the pipeline to put those Americans to work. At least 40 people have been killed and more than 100 wounded in a double suicide car bombing in Syrian capital of Damascus. Syrian authorities say that most of the dead were civilians. It was the first attack of its kind hit to hit Damascus since the Syrian uprising broke out nine months ago. Violence, meanwhile, continues in other parts of Syria where government forces are attempting to crush opposition protests. Eight people were reportedly killed in the city of Homs after government forces fired on protesters leaving a mosque. And in Egypt, square people are gathering at Cairo's Tahrir Square. 
later to protest against military rule. The rally follows a recent wave of violence against protesters that saw 17 people killed. Pakistan has rejected the conclusion of the U.S. probe with an attack in Pakistan-Afghanistan border last month that left 24 Pakistani soldiers dead. On Thursday, the pa Pentagon said U.S. and Afghan commandos incorrectly determined that there was no Pakistani forces in the area before the airstrike, but the probe was also faulted Pakistan. Saying Pakistani soldiers had mistakenly fired at the U.S. troops and that both sides had failed to properly communicate in Washington. Pentagon spokesperson George Little re expressed, expressed regrets about the deaths, said inadequate coordination by U.S. and Pakistani military officers operating through the border coordinated center, including our reliance on incorrect mapping information shared with Pakistani lights on officer, resulted in a misunderstanding about the true location of the Pakistani military units. This, coupled with other gaps in information about the activities and placement of units from both sides, contributed to the tragic result for the loss of life for the lack of proper coordination between U.S. and Pakistani forces that contributed to those losses we express our deepest regret. In response to the probe, Pakistani military rejected any blame and said the U.S. report is short on facts. United Nations Security Council has rejected a probe into the deaths of scores of civilians in the NATO bombing of Libya earlier this year. In a short story on Thursday, a New York Times investigation found at least 40 civilians, perhaps more than 70, were killed by NATO. The dead included at least 29 women and children. On Thursday, Russian ambassador to the United Nations said a probe is needed to determine the exact toll, and they said the matter of civilian casualties we believe is particular with the bombing campaign is particularly important because we need to have a serious ana analysis. Some member of the council I can share with you thought that somehow it is a diversion from Syria coming from us asking why we are not discussing Syria. I gave a very simple response because today we are discussing Libya. It is in our agenda. So this is where it stands now. The United States has refused to allow U.N. Security Council probe into the Libyan civilian deaths. In a response to the proposal, U.S. Ambassador Susan Rice accused Russia of trying to distract from its opposition to a measure condemning the Syrian crackdown. She said this is a distraction and diversion is a diversion from the fact that the Council's actions and that a NATO and its partners saved tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of Libyan lives. It's something that we should be celebrating. It is certainly something that the people of Libya are celebrating. And if the Libyans want to work with NATO to investigate any concerns that they have, we're more than willing to do that. I think it's notable that we are not heard that call from the Libyan government. It's superfluous, or <laughs> whatever, and it's a stunt. That's what she said. Communities along the Nigerian Niger Delta have put uh, up an alert following a major oil spill on oil giant shell. Satellite image indicates spill spread 356 square miles. A massive oil slick is making its way to the Nigerian coast to threaten local wildlife and massive pollution along the shores. Shell says that 40,000 barrels leaked so far, but Nigeria National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency says spill could be three times as large. Spill comes four months after the United Nations said it would take 30 years and around one billion in small section of Delta to recover the environmental damage caused by Shell and other companies. Companies. A federal judge has blocked several key measures in South Carolina's anti-immigration law, the latest in a series of judgments against similar measures nationwide. On Thursday, U.S. District Judge Richard Gergea froze a number of provisions he said would breach the federal government's sole authority to oversee immigration enforcement. The measure included rules forcing police officers to check immigration status of individuals if the officer was reasonably suspicious, but they were undocumented. Justice Department coalition and civil rights groups had sued to prevent the law from taking effect next month. And thousands of California nurses walked off job on Thursday, the latest protest over benefits when working conditions. The one-day strikes banned nine hospitals in Los Angeles, San Francisco areas. Deanne McEwen of the National Nursing United Executive Council spoke outside Memorial Hospital in Long Beach and said, we're out here because the hospitals refused to put a safe staffing language in the contract, number one. Number two, the health care takeaways they got on the table. They want us to pay more money for health care. This is health care facility. Sick and vulnerable patients deserve healthy nurses to care for them. Two more Occupy encampments have been cleared for poli in police raids. In Albany, New York, the encampment at Academy Park was torn down after police rushed protesters with pepper spray. One protester appeared to have suffered a seizure after being pepper sprayed and was taken to away in an ambulance. Meanwhile, California police have cleared the Occupy Berkeley encampment in Civic Center Park. For the first time in history, U.S. Government Advisory Board has asked scientific journals not to publish scientific findings for fear of information could be used by terrorist groups to construct lethal viruses and kick off World 
worldwide epidemics. National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity, overseen by the National Institute of Health, has asked the Nature and Science to leave out the details of the study conducted by the Netherlands and the United States. The study led to the creation of a highly transmissible form of deadly flu virus called the H5N1. It is exceptionally deadly. Scientists have worried that if the virus did develop, the capacity to either pass from person to person or could lead to a more catastrophic pandemics ever, one of the worst. But amid certain details that, that would allow that so that it couldn't be recreated. Bruce Albert, editor of Science, noted that the findings revealed the virus could be more easily evolved into a dangerous state than previously believed and could be spread through the air. Scientists say they will probably withhold some information if the government provides a way to legitimate researchers, legitimate researchers to information. And that's it for today. Uh, we're going to thank another underwriter now. That's right, it's time for the police blotter and pictures in the blotter, not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. Grass Valley Police Department on Friday, 9.14 a.m., a caller from 100 block of West Main Street reported that a transient was panhandling in front of a retail business. 9.21 a.m., a caller from 200 block of South Auburn Street reported a blue mountain bike was left at the Veterans Hall for several days. 3.18 p.m., a caller from 700 block of Taylorville Road reported a man selling movies from the back of a van was intimidating people. And 6.10 p.m., a caller from 100 block of East Main Street reported two females ate a meal in a restaurant and left without paying. At 9.40 p.m., a caller from 300 block of Railroad Avenue reported that he lost keys while playing golf and could not access his house or vehicle. 11.45 p.m., a caller from 200 block of Fairmont Drive reported a man was looking into various neighborhood cars. On Saturday, 10.09 a.m., a caller from 200 block of Sutton Way reported a person shooting birds in a wooded area near residence. 11.19 a.m., a caller from southbound ramp of Highway 49 onto McKnight Way reported a man patrolling the ramp in hopes of locating the Central Intelligence Agency. 12.51 p.m., a caller from 600 block of Freeman Lane reported a man and a woman shoplifted an entire cartload of items from a business. At 2.39 p.m., a caller from 1500 block of Mulberry Drive reported that she was a victim of a telephone fraud and was out $3,700. 2.47 p.m., a caller from 300 block of Sutton Way reported someone stole his mason jar last week. At 8.47 p.m., he called back to tell officers that if he was killed, that he would like to leave all his property to his daughter. 8.31 p.m., a caller from 300 block of Pleasant Road reported that people have been taking items from her neighbor's house while they were out of town. At 11.52 p.m., a caller from 100 block of Maryland Drive reported a man was yelling obscenities while threatening to kill him. And Sunday, 2.37 a.m., a caller from 1900 block of Nevada City Highway reported that all his friends are against him. Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Friday, 8.30 a.m., a caller from 18,000 block of Jayhawk Drive reported an instance of credit card fraud. 
and 9.04 a.m. A caller from 10,000 block of Allison Ranch Road reported an extremely intoxicated person with a black eye was engaged in a verbal altercation with someone in the residence. At 9.09 a.m., a caller from 12,000 block of Banner Lava Cap Road reported receiving a strange call from someone claiming they were ill. Return phone calls went unanswered. At 10.49 a.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Tola Ridge Court reported an instance of bank fraud. At 1.39 p.m., a caller from 18,000 block of Refuge Road reported that the mother and his son had not contacted him in a month and he believes them to be absconded to Oklahoma. 3.18 p.m., a caller from 14,000 block of Rough and Ready Highway reported a person made illegal contact with her over the Internet and proceeded to harass her. And 4.11 p.m., a caller from 17,000 block of Grace Court asked officers to conduct a welfare check on her son who is having severe withdrawal symptoms after stopping alcohol and drugs. At 7.09 p.m., a caller from the intersection of Buckeye Road and Red Dog Road reported there multiple vehicles were driving too fast in the area and believes the owner of the vehicle was involved in a marijuana grow operation. 9.30 p.m., an intoxicated caller from Grass Valley requested officers provide her and her son with a housing that she had lost her keys and got locked out of her apartment by her roommate. 11.05 p.m., a caller from 18,000 block of Black Hawk, Hawk Court reported that she was choked by a member of her family. 11.06 p.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Tasha Road reported that her son was threatening her and her daughter with a knife. And Saturday, 4.52 a.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Wolf Drive reported a male subject outside the house screaming and throwing rocks at his window. At 1.37 p.m., a caller from 15,000 block of Little Valley Road reported an incident of domestic violence. At 1.47 p.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Red Dog Road reported that someone stole his food. At 2.15 p.m., a caller from 14,000 block of Plover Way reported that there was a suspicious man has been inspecting her home regularly for the past several nights. At 7.02 p.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Cone Tree Trail reported instance of theft at his residence. 8.07 p.m., a caller from 12,000 block of Greenhorn Road reported a stove explosion. At 8.15 p.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Rough and Ready Road reported an instance of promiscuous shooting. 8.29 p.m., a caller from 13,000 block of Greenhorn Road reported that a man stole a laptop computer from her residence. And Sunday, 1.23 a.m., Officers ran a routine check on a children of a mother who was in the hospital emergency room under the influence of illicit drugs. In Nevada City Police Department on Friday, 4.17 p.m., a caller from 700 block of Zion Street said a man stole a basket of groceries. In 10.43 p.m., a caller from 500 block of Buren Street reported that her friend was extremely intoxicated and belligerent and was concerned for her safety. Saturday. 4.22 p.m., a caller from 200 block of Broad Street reported that her credit cards may have been stolen while she was in a business. At 6.40 p.m., a caller from 800 block of Zion Street reported an intoxicated man was becoming verbally abusive. And Sunday, 2.51 a.m., a caller from 400 block of Railroad Avenue reported that a woman was screaming at her because her computer wouldn't work. And that's it for the blotter today. Now, another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley, 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. In today's local news headlines, Dan Lee pleads no contest to sex charge and almost no downtown graffiti, police report says, and parole board denies release to Patterson. In a story, an 18-year-old Grass Valley man had changed his plea in court Thursday pleading no contest to unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Jonathan Eli Danley was arrested August 26 on a suspicion of rape of a drug victim, forcible, forcible sexual penetration of a victim unable to resist and lewd and lascivious acts by force of a child younger than 14. The girl allegedly was under the influence of alcohol at the time of the incident. Attorney Stephen Munkelt, who was representing the victim, asked for a psychological evaluation to be conducted requested was denied by Superior Court Judge R.M. Smith. 
Prosecutor Katie Francis suggested possible probation term could bar Danley from contact with underage girls unless it's in the presence of another adult. Danley is scheduled to return to Nevada County Superior Court for sentencing 9 a.m. February 9th. And in a story written by Trina Kleist of the Union, in case of graffiti, you could say no news is good news. A new procedure put in place by the Grass Valley by in Grass Valley in the late summer has resulted in quick removal of graffiti when it appears. Members of the city police department are working more closely with private property owners to remove the eyesores on their land and with public works to remove marks left on city property, said police officer Jim Amaral, the point man for the city's anti-graffiti effort. But after a rash of disturbed scrawls on private and public walls in downtown Grass Valley in August, just a handful of incidents have occurred in the past three months. At United Methodist Church in South Church Street, grounds administrator Charlie Luckenbill makes the rounds every morning during the week, work week to check for graffiti and other vandalism. The Methodist property and the Unitarian Universalist Church next door have been frequent targets during that earlier rash. Luckenbill tries to paint over graffiti as soon as he finds it, he said. Maybe that's what's keeping them away, he said, adding. But more often, vandalism takes the form of people picking flowers from the rose gardens, leaving trash on properties, and knocking down railings with their skateboards, Luckenbill said. The other kind of vandalism, less obvious and more offensive to neighbors, remains an ongoing problem. The Nevada County District Attorney's Office announced that Mitchell Patterson has been denied parole. On March 31, 1993, Patterson took his 10-year-old daughter, Adriana, for a lengthy meandering drive in his pickup that started in Willits, continued to the Golden Gate Bridge, and ended up on Highway 80 in the Sierra Nevada. They ran out of gas on Donner Summit after declining assistance from Highway Patrol and other passing motorists. Patterson grabbed his daughter and pushed her in the path of a big rig truck, killing her instantly. First, Patterson stated that it was an accident. Later, he indicated he believed that bad people were after them and wanted to cause them a slow, cool death. While Patterson clearly suffered from a history of mental illness, he was not considered legally insane at the trial. Following jury trial, Patterson was sentenced to 25 years to life. The case was later retried due to an error in the jury instructions. Patterson was resentenced to 15 years to life. On Tuesday, the parole board considered Patterson's case for eligibility for parole. In a two-part hearing located at the California Men's Colony in Central California that started this summer, several of Adriana's family members traveled long distances to speak in opposition of Patterson's release. Patterson's ex-wife, Adriana's mother, testified that she considered Patterson to be a dangerous man and remains in fear of him should he be released. Prosecutor Catherine Francis argued against parole suitability, citing Patterson's attempts to minimize the seriousness of his crime, a history of violence abuse towards family members, as well as his history of refusing his psychiatric medications. Patterson's defense attorney argued that the inmate was ch has changed his tone, has accepted responsibility for Adriana's death, and has stayed conflict-free for the past five years. Following testimony and argument, Commissioner Ferguson denied parole, stating that Patterson posed an unreasonable danger to public safety and extended Patterson's commitment for an additional five years before he may again be considered. This case was tragic for Adriana's family and our community, said Nevada County District Attorney Cliff Newell. Denying parole to Mr. Patterson will not bring Adriana back, but it will give some temporary solace to her family. And that's it for local news today. Now we We'll revisit the Nevada County Sheriff's Most Wanted. I haven't really looked lately to see if some of them have been caught. Nevada County Sheriff's Office Most Wanted, December 7th, 2011. These people have warrants for their arrest. If you see any of these subjects on the street or have any information regarding their whereabouts, please contact the Sheriff's Department or local law enforcement. Every effort is made to keep this information as current as possible. However, the information provided should be verified before taking any action. Shown below, each picture is type of crime and last known city of residence. Please confirm warrant with Nevada County Sheriff's Warrant Division 530-265-1474. First up is Jason Angus McNutt, age 36, out of Truckee, violation, probation, felony, no bail. Next up, David Humberto Gonzalez, age 29, out of Grass Valley, lewd and lascivious act, felony, $50,000. Aram's Aaron James Stock, age 31, Grass Valley, 
Zest controlled substance, felony, $30,000 bail. Daniel Robert Dwyer, age 44, Penn Valley, spousal abuse, felony, $25,000 bail. Molly Ruth Algier, age 23, Nevada City, numerous drug offenses, accessory to felony, $10,000 bail. Brendan Barker, age 31, whereabouts unknown, numerous drug offenses, felony, $70,000 bail. And Justin Owen Bayer, age 35, Grass Valley, numerous drug offenses, felony, $42,500 bail. And Mark Ray Johnson, age 45, Grass Valley, numerous drug offenses, felony, no bail. Michael Carl Peterson, age 28, Cortland, Indiana, stolen vehicle, felony, $10,000 bail. Jennifer Lynn Gray, a.k.a. Steele or Ross or Cooper, age 37, rough and ready, drugs, felony, no bail. Robert Dean Hicks, age 60, Sacramento, grand theft, felony, bail, $50,000. And James Dolor Carroll, age 32, Nevada, attempted stolen vehicle, violation, probation, felony, no bail. Nevada County Sheriff's Office updated most wanted. Uh, this is 12-7-2011. These people have warrants for their arrest. If you see any of these people on the street or have information regarding their whereabouts, you can contact the Sheriff's Department. Every effort is made to keep this information current. And be careful. Some of these people could be dangerous. Please confirm your warrant with the Nevada County Sheriff's Warrants Unit at 530-265-1474. Do not attempt to apprehend these suspects. Instead, contact the local law enforcement agency or Nevada County Sheriff's Office, 530-265-1474. Next step is Sergio Espatilla, age 40, aka Armando Espatilla, or Sergio Bravo. Wanted for murder, felony, no bail. Christopher Keith Besant, age 29, Nevada, burglary, grand theft, felony, no bail. And Charlene Jillian Hill, age 33, out of Nevada, drugs, violation, probation, felony, 25,000. Preston Robert Ryan, age 21, Grass Valley, possession of controlled substance, and felony, no bail. And Justin Lee Nurse, Age 23, Grass Valley, driving on a suspended license, vehicle registration compliance misdemeanor, $2,500 bail. And Michael...